This is your guy, S.D. Booker, with the Toast to the Men. Before you listen to this video, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the like button. Hit that like button. Let's go. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the Men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's go. Now, this video is about the track sensation, the fastest woman in the world, Miss Sha'Carri Richardson. Now, Miss Richardson was recently or is currently in the news because of a failed drug test. Uh, she actually took this test a month ago. It came out recently, a few days ago, that she failed it. And that drug that was detected in that test, marijuana. Um, as a result, it was determined that she would not be participating in uh, this this year's Olympic team or, or, or uh, Olympic experience. So she won't be participating. And like I said, this is uh, a track sensation. Fastest woman in the world, setting records. And uh, she's from the Dallas area. You know, I'm, I'm from and live in the Dallas area. So, uh, you know, this, this uh, really hit home or touched home, not in an emotional way, because, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm not that kind of guy, but uh, you kind of feel it more because, you know, you're in the same city, same state. Now, I've been seeing people weighing in on this uh, from, you know, just people on Facebook. I've been seeing people, uh, YouTube uh, personalities weighing in on this, uh, major news outlets. Even the president, President Joe Biden, uh, made a brief statement on this. And uh, it's going both ways, but I think it's leaning more towards uh, sympathy for the young lady. And I can understand that. I can understand that, the, the sympathy. You know, she came out with a statement, and not even just a statement. She uh, came out and spoke on a news outlet, and she gave her side of it. And uh, basically, uh, she said she was going through a rough time. Uh, at the time she tried the marijuana, her biological mother had passed and she had a tough time dealing with it. Uh, so she uh, decided to uh, medicate herself with marijuana. You know, uh, I'll start out with what the president said, and this is probably one of the few times I agree with Joe Biden. And he said, the rules are the rules. And I agree. The rules are the rules. However, I'll try to give an objective take on this. Because I think uh, there's uh, two or more sides to this. Or viewpoints or perspectives we can take on this. Now, I dislike when someone goes extreme left or extreme right. I mean, extreme. You can be left or right, but to go extreme, I personally have a problem with that. So we'll take the people who are going extreme right. So you got people saying, hey, there's nothing wrong with smoking marijuana. It should be legal. Uh, it's legal in several states. It's... Uh, uh, actually, federally, they're about to take it, you know, out of the books as being uh, an illegal drug. I see people saying that. And uh, those same people are not holding Miss Richardson accountable at all. They're not saying she was wrong. She shouldn't have done it. She should have been more disciplined. They're just going extreme right on it. Then I got people I'm seeing that are going extreme left. Uh, the rules are the rules. That's it, right? That's it. Uh, no empathy, uh, no understanding. 
at all. Those are the rules. That's it. That's the extreme left. I got a problem with both of these people. Now, my take on it, the rules are the rules. And so for these people who uh, try to just excuse, you know, her behavior, you know, and said, uh, we should, we is legal in certain states and, and she shouldn't be penalized. You know, that's BS. That's BS. Um, even though weed is legal in several states, even at your job, your job, private company, or even if it's, a, if it's a public company, they have the right to drug test. They have the right to say, uh, you can't have drugs in your system. Hey, whether that's uh, methamphetamine, marijuana, whatever it is, they have the right uh, also, alcohol is a drug. It's a legal drug, but it is a drug. Now, if you come to work smelling like alcohol, I guarantee you, you will be reprimanded. Yeah, this, this ain't the, the 50s and 60s, even the 70s, where you know a lot of people got away with that, coming to work smelling like alcohol. Uh, you will be reprimanded, uh, walked out, suspended, probably fired. And alcohol is a legal drug. Those are their rules. And so this is the thing. I know a lot of people try to uh, disregard the rules, disregard the law because of personal feelings. And they excuse their behavior and their lack of discipline and focus because that's what it really gets down to. And, and people don't want to accept that. They suffer from a lack of discipline and a lack of focus. And they try to excuse it by saying, hey, it's no big deal. It's legal in several states. It's not a performance enhancing drug. And uh, that's just an excuse. That's a cop out because they lack discipline. Now, Miss Richardson, you know, uh, I empathize with her, losing her biological mom and, uh, you know, taking that hard emotionally and probably mentally. And so that's understandable. But uh, that just shows you that, you know, although this woman is the fastest woman in the world, track sensation, she's uh, not as mentally strong as you would think. Man, listen, people go through death all the time, you know, with less on the line, and they don't succumb to doing things like this. You know, she had a lot at stake. Uh, we knew she was gonna be great uh, in, in the pre-trials, and, and her upside was, was huge. We knew she was destined for greatness. She had a lot on her, a lot, a lot was expected, not just from the public, but from herself. And so, uh, man, you just gotta be more disciplined. Be more disciplined, be more focused. Now, for me to buy or to believe this is her first time trying marijuana, man, I would be naive and stupid to believe that. You don't just try marijuana for the first time because, you know, your biological mother uh, passed. Man, listen, this, this, this young lady has been trying marijuana. And I don't have a problem with that. You know, I don't partake, but I ain't got a problem with people that try marijuana but or indulge in it. But when you know what's at stake, you know <laughs> your job is drug testing, your employer is drug testing, and you still do it, maybe there's a problem. Maybe there's a problem as far as addiction. Maybe there's a problem uh, as far as discipline and focus. Maybe there's a problem because you know this is coming up. She knows she's going to get tested. She knows regardless of her mom passing, regardless of where she was emotionally, she had to be at a point like effort, effort and be very uh, unresponsible, irresponsible, you know? Um, like I said, I do not believe this is her first time uh, indulging in marijuana. I think this is the first time, maybe the first time she got caught, but this ain't the first time she tried it. 
And uh, yeah, so for those people that's excusing her behavior, you know, man, you got to come over to the middle a little bit. You got to hold her accountable. And I think, you know, it's a dangerous message. We're sending kids to where, you know, we want to put our feelings, our personal feelings over principles. You know, we got to we got to put principles above feelings, you know, and now. Like I said, it can't be so extreme that we can't empathize with people. And it's just black and white. You know what I'm saying? Can't empathize. But what do we learn, man? How do we learn from mistakes? How do we take L's, losses, and turn them into L's of lessons if we don't hold ourselves accountable and set the bar high? You know, I just don't get how that's going to happen when we excuse certain behaviors because we focus discipline and, uh, and focus. Uh, now, on the other side of that, the people are saying, hey, those are the rules. She should have uh, known better. She should have been more disciplined. And that's just it. No empathy at all. You know, I got a problem with those people too. Uh, because let me tell you, we've all made mistakes. And, uh, you know, we all should be shown some grace. We've all been shown grace. I guarantee you, every last one of us has been shown some grace and mercy in this world, including myself. And so we can't be so extreme and so rigid and hard that we can't empathize with the young lady. Uh, we've all, uh, you know, died some bullets, uh, some literally, some figuratively. And so, uh, you know, we gotta gotta be more empathetic um, yeah, yeah, it can't be so rigid, man. It can't be so rigid because when you're so rigid like that, you put yourself in a place of judgment. And, uh, when you judge, you can't love. <laughs> you can't love, you can't receive love, you can't give love. So when you're so extreme to the left, and keyword extreme to the left, you put yourself in a position, man, where... You're gonna block your blessings and you can't you can't learn, you can't love, receive, or give. So you don't wanna be in that position. Wanna to try to be empathetic. But if you choose to hold someone to the letter of the law, I get that too. But you can show leniency. So was it an overreaction? Should she be removed from the Olympic team? Man, uh, from an emotional state, a feeling state, I want to see a run. I want to see a run. Uh, but I would like to know how things were handled in the past uh, with people who have failed drug tests. Uh, because that would be the precedent. Uh, that would be the benchmark. And so we can't show favoritism just because she's a young black woman. We can't show favoritism. And so we got to be consistent in how we deal with certain things. Uh, because if not, I think the Olympic team is going to get a lot of backlash because I'm sure she's not the first one that has failed a drug test and has been removed from the Olympic team. Uh, so yeah, from an emotional standpoint, I would like to see her run. From a selfish standpoint, I would like to see her run. That's that's selfish though because I I just want to see some some good <laughs> you know some good runs uh, I want to see her break some records I like her flavor so I want to see her run but that's that's the selfishness in me though right but on the principal side of it like I said we gotta be consistent and we gotta look back in the history and see hey how are these these situations handled in the past hey that's what it is. That's what it is. The rules are the rules. But there could be some leniency shown. But then I look at it, man, if she gets by with this, what's the lesson learned? Does she learn a lesson? What's the message we're sending to, you know, young kids that our feelings override principles and discipline and focus? Say, so, hey, man, it's tricky. Uh, of course, it's not my decision to make. It's tricky. But, uh, hey, we'll see. Now, in closing, I've been seeing a lot of people saying uh, she messed up the bag. She messed up the bag by this. Um, 
because people are not going to want to deal with her. She's going to lose uh, advertisements, sponsorships because of this situation. Now, uh, before the situation, during the pre-trials, uh, when she won, I heard her speak. After she, she set that record and ran, I heard her speak, and she mentioned God a lot. So we're going to really see how rooted she is in her belief. But to that young lady and to people saying uh, she, she fumbled the bag, she messed up the bag, she messed up opportunities. Man, I would say I don't subscribe to that. So when you, when you uh, determine how high or how long or how broad your potential is or your future is dependent upon what the world thinks of you or depending upon the, rule, the rules of the world and how forgiven the world is how accepting the world is, man, you just limited yourself. You know, you can't you can't serve two gods. You can't say the world sets the benchmark or sets uh, uh, the potential for me, and the world rules how 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 well I can do in this world in this realm, and then come back and say. You believe in God. Nah, nah, listen. God is only as powerful as you believe he is. Uh, and if you've been following me, I don't believe God is an outside entity. I think God is in here. So if you think the world can stop the potential of the bad you can get or acquire. If you think the world can stop anything you want to do, you're serving two gods. I don't want to hear you talking about God because the God in me can go through anything and prevail anything and overcome anything, no matter what I do, no matter what mistakes I, I may do. Uh, the God in me is more powerful than the world. Right, I serve my higher self, the God in me, and I'm telling you, your God, your God, because we all have our own God. Your God is only as powerful as you believe He is. Point blank. Period. All right. I wish the best for that young lady, uh, and if she uh, understands that the God in her is more powerful than anything in the world. Man, no bags will be missed. She actually should get more bags. She'll be okay. All right? As usual, love from me to you. Peace. Get a double shot of that, uh, Bossy Yay. No rocks, no chasing, baby.